is, um, sorry, I just put this together. I don't know how to put them in order. My son does. Um, this is our a home unit, and we have a couple different models of this system. If you have fluoride in your water, then I re recommend the twin system because this system is for fluoride and arsenic only, and it's the first system. And then the second system removes, it's a mixture of material that removes all the VOCs, it removes uh, chlorine, chloramines, and it removes all those other bad guys that are in the water. So as a combination, this gives you like spring quality water to bathe in. It gives you very high quality water to cook in, which is a big deal. Most people don't cook with bottled water, but they drink it. They won't boil their pasta in it, right? So this here, just, it's just like having very good fresh well water. I had a, a, um, a client of mine, I'm in Florida, and she's from New York, and she's, she's down there now, and she just, right away, she's, she's from upstate New York where they got really good quality water in their wells, and she says, man, and when we put it in, she goes, oh, I feel like I'm back home. You know, my skin's not crawling off, you know, I, f I feel great. So it was, uh, this, uh, this system here is something you can put on your home. And if you don't have fluoride in your water, you can go down to one unit, save yourself some money. But if you, if you do, which most places do, I know Dallas, from what I understand, just stopped using fluoride in the water. Our county in Martin County, Florida, had stopped using it a couple years ago. A, a local neurologist had fought it in one, and now I support her. And uh, so there's places that are getting rid of fl fluoride out of the water, but I wouldn't count on it. Uh, bottled water, and I see a lot of us have them here now, and it's using plastics, and plastics are made with petroleum products. And uh, water stored in plastic bottles leaches a chemical called BPAs. Now you'll see bottles that are BPA free, and they use BPS which is another chemical that's almost as bad as BPA. So it's another thing that to watch out for. If you can get glass, I recommend to a lot of people, you can buy a Voss bottle at most grocery stores. It's glass, and you can keep your water in that if you're going to be bringing it from home. I take a soft-sided cooler. I have a bunch of Voss bottles. I fill them up every day, and that's, that's how I get my water. But these BPAs are horm hormonal disruptors in places that are very hot, like Florida and Texas in the summertime or Arizona or California. You leave those in your car and you go to drink out of it and it tastes like you're drinking out of a, you know, out of a, out of a plastic pipe or something, right? It's really, it's really bad because all those plastics are getting in. Uh, a five gallon bottle you see on a water cooler, this is a known fact, that they're only supposed to use that bottle 25 times and then they're supposed to discard it because there's a protective coating in it because it's actually a number seven plastic, it's the worst plastic you can use. And they rewash these thousands of times and, and you're getting that nasty plastic out of your five gallon bottles and one of the other issues with them are, is that um, who knows where they've been? I have guys, that, you know, one guy I know, he, uh, he said, man, they were in their garage where they worked at, at, for a Chevy dealership. They had a brake line leaking and it was going all over the floor and he was looking around, he grabbed a water bottle and he shoved it in the brake line in it. And then it went back to Zephyr Hills and it got slowly rinsed and brake fluid's really toxic and somebody drank out of that bottle some, you know, many, many times. And another place I've seen when I cracked up, I was at a pet store and they had black snakes in one. Black snakes, snakes, they've had snakes they put down in the water bottle. And it was funny, it was sitting out in front and I said, are you gonna return it? He goes, oh yeah, I'm getting my deposit back. <laughs> I said, so where's your bottle, water bottle been? I used to take pictures of them, put them on our website. So that's just, just let you know. All right, let's move on here. One of the materials we use in our drinking system is uh, Fe2 and Fe3, it's a ferrous iron, it emits far infrared rays. And far infrared, you hear about far infrared saunas and all these things that are good for us. Well, they're very healing to the body and they add energy to the water and it helps detoxify the uh, living organisms and it suppresses the growth of excessive free radicals and shortens the chain cluster of water. So this is one of the things that microclusters our water and makes it high solvent up here. So the far infrared ray material that we use in, in our in material is Fe2 and Fe3. And I was just in Sedona and I grabbed a bunch of red rock and I'm gonna play with that and see how good that is because that that's a very high iron content. So I want to see what we can do with that. When we're talking about microclustering, what are with clusters about five to six molecules, which you're seeing over here, is, is much better hydrating than large molecules because it cannot penetrate the cell. There's a good analogy I heard from a doctor in Florida at a meeting I was at, and she said, and I, and I, was, I was really, really excited to hear what she said. She said, if you, take, if you were to take a chain link fence, we all know what a chain link fence is, right? And that's your aquaporous cell. Let's say that's the way the water hydrates. And we're in Florida, so let's take a grapefruit. And that's your water molecules. You throw it at that chain link fence, 
it's just going to bounce off, right? It's not going to penetrate the fence. It's going to maybe hit the outside of the fence and get the outside of the fence grapefruit on it, but not the inside, not the other side. So, but if you took a handful of grapes and threw it at that fence, they'd go right through. Even if it hit the fence, they'd probably go right through. And that's the same with the water molecules that we're finding in our, uh, in our tap water or our, even our bottled water. They're long chain. Even purified water has a long chain. Might be a smaller, might be more like nine than 20 clusters, but it's going to be a longer chain. And, it, and five to six clusters seem to be the hexagonal key that will fit the cell to hydrate the intercellular. You know, a lot of doctors tell people that they're chronically dehydrated, but they drink a lot of water. And they're like, I drink, how's that possible? I drink a gallon of water a day. How could I be dehydrated? Well, it's because you're not getting hydrated through the cell. And one of the things that I don't know if you noticed or not, but our water system out here that you've been drinking out of, people drink two to three times as much water when they drink this type of water because they process it. It doesn't sit in their stomach and slosh around because when it's in your stomach, you think you got enough water, you think you're full. So you stop drinking it. This water, just as soon as it hits your mouth, it's going into your cells. It's hydrating, you know, all the 70 trillion cells in your body really, really fast. Within less than 20 minutes, it's, in, it's even to your hair. So we, our skin hydrates from the inside out. So aging and all these issues are, are from lack of, you know, dehydration. Here's a test, that, a simple test that you can do at home with this type of water, is you can take any type of water you want. Go buy any bottled water off the shelf, any filtered water, I don't care if it's alkaline or not, buy it off the shelf, tap water, and you put green tea in it, just regular green tea, and you sit it on top, and this is what it's gonna do. It's just gonna sit on top, and it's gonna slowly work its way in. It's gonna slowly work its way into the water, correct? And then if you take our water that's microclustered, ionized, alkalized, you put the green tea in it, and within seconds, the whole glass turns green. Another good example is oil. A good oil you can use is palm oil, or you can use sesame oil, and you put oil in a, you know, you put water in the glass, both glasses, and you put oil on top of it. And we learned in chemistry 101 that oil and water don't mix, right? But when you have water that's microclustered, it'll penetrate the oil and break it down. So you'll see that the oil will be getting absorbed by the water. And that's a pretty, that's a pretty profound statement. You won't see that with anything. It's a, it's a neat science experiment that you can do at home. It's one of the ways to know that your water's microclustered. This is a test we did. We went to uh, Novata Labs in Princeton, New Jersey, and we did an NMR, a nuclear uh, clustering water test, nuclear magnetic resonance. And we took tap water from New Jersey, and tap water measured at 123 hertz. And what this means is the bigger the number, the bigger the cluster, okay? So then we took spring water. It really wasn't spring water. It was Fiji water, because it's my choice of water. When I have no other access, I drink Fiji water and it was 82 hertz. I said, okay, we made an improvement. The cluster of the water was smaller. And then we took our water and it came in at 53 hertz. And I was really impressed with that. We actually did a water that, that a machine that was more powerful and it was for something for a, a biotech company and we got it all the way down to 41 hertz. So we know we really can manipulate that cluster size. And that you can see that right here. So the smaller the number, the smaller the cluster. Our technology has advanced to the point where now we can manipulate the simple taken for granted water molecule and put it to work. And we make it become an antioxidant itself. There's so many ways that we can do it, but the best way we found to do it was to do it natural with a natural material that comes out of the earth. We use, we use a, a very high energetic tourmaline. And when the water comes in contact with it, it puts off active hydrogen. And the active hydrogen creates a, a potential hydrogen which raises the pH. So it's, like I said, pH is a byproduct of what we're doing. It's not what we're, we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is we're trying to break the molecular structure of the water down. We're trying to put electrons in it so the water, like the biomodulator, is an electron donor. And it does a very good job. Uh, uh, University of Georgia uh, researchers have found is that dise disease cells are surrounded by unstructured water, where healthy cells are surrounded by structured water. So we'll get into a little bit more why about that. How many people in here know what ORP is? Okay, we got a few. ORP is oxidation reduction potential. It's the redox reduction, it's the, it's the reductant. It's, it's when, you, when you're in a negative ORP, you're in, an, you're in an antioxidant state, and when you're in a positive, I kind of wish they did it the other way. I wish positive was good and negative was bad, but it's not. Negative this time is good. 
And when you're in a positive state, you're in a positive oxidation state to rust or cause damage. And uh, it's just a measure, we have ORP meters that we can measure the electron charge on the water. We can measure if it's a negative and we can measure it if it's a positive. So this, when we take uh, these measurements and we look here, Dr. Ta Tennant talks about in his book, this is where tap water is. This is where slightly alkaline water is. You're picking up this negative charge. Higher alkaline water, high alkalized water, and high acidic water. So you notice that tap water is about a positive 2 to 400. Alkaline water is a, is a, you know, a negative 100 to negative 300. And high alkaline water can get negative 4 to 7. And we've gotten these numbers as high as negative 1,200. And it's a little too high. I guess there is such thing as too much of a good thing because we were trying to make a hybrid of the system. And it felt like you had a bunch of 9-volt batteries in your mouth. So much energy, too much energy. So you all know that uh, uh, when you're an electron donor or an antioxidant, you're, you're fixing an impaired electron. You know, that's what electron dona donating is. You have a free radical, which is right here, and you're giving it an electron. So that's what all these extra electrons are doing. And just sips of this water are millions and millions of added electrons. So it's a, it's a very good donor. Here's eff effects of oxidation. When we're talking about positive ORP. If you cut an apple, it turns brown, right? It, is it oxidizes. Well, if it's an organic apple. There's some apples out there that stay pretty clear for a little while, but they're, they're genetically altered. Um, meats decay, steals rust, uh, fats rancid, plants wilt, and we all know that human cells age. That's part of oxidation. When we're talking about, you know, and truly, if you can hit yourself with all these antioxidants and stay hydrated, wouldn't you believe that would be truly the fountain of youth to keep your skin hydrated, to keep your hair <coughs> very healthy? I had probably about 30 to 50 percent gray hair before my heart episode. My brother's 36 years old, and he has all gray hair and I'm 48, okay? I don't dye my hair. My sister and my mom harassed me for so many years, they thought I was putting Just For Men in my hair. They even went in my bathroom to look for it. <laughs> we know you're using it. I said, I'm not using it. How'd you get rid of your gray hair? I said, I just think it's gotta be the antioxidant properties of the water. Um, this is another test. We're talking about tests you can do at home. You can, paper clips are made out of steel. If you put paper clips in any type of water, they're gonna rust. You can put them in a little jar here. If you, put, if you put paper clips in alkalized antioxidant water, they won't rust, just like you won't oxidize. The same thing, steel wool's even quicker. If you take steel wool and shove it in a glass, I do take two beer glasses because they're perfect. I put steel wool in one and, and the other one, and we put ionized alkalized water in there, and in the other one, we put uh, tap water or somebody else's ionized water in, or alkaline water in a bottle, and we pour them both out at the end of the demonstration, and the one that comes out of theirs is always rusty because it doesn't have a charge because these bottles won't hold a charge. The charges escape. And then the other side is, is always clear. So that's just a good example of ORP. And here's exactly what I was just saying. The effects of oxidation, human cells age. Now if we can figure out how to drink this water and stop breathing, we'll all be okay. <laughs> we'll stop oxidizing. But all I did was I took this woman's face with a, uh, with a little girl's face and put it underneath. And I'm just saying that the water truly is uh, anti-aging. Here's some good examples. pH with 7.5 to 9.5 is great, great antacid reflux, anti-acidosis, anti-osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is just our body getting robbed of, of, of the calcium in the bones, anti-obesity, anti-gout. I know a lot of people with gout that have overcome gout with this water anti-depression, anti-aging, and anti-cancer. And here's just a pH scale when you do drops. You can see different colors of pH. And health is up here in the alkaline area. And when we're acidic, we're sick. We're having issues. And Dr. Tennant talks a lot about that. Here's another great guy. I don't know who anybody here heard of Otto Warburg. Otto Warburg was a Nobel Prize recipient in 1931 for proving cancer cannot survive in an alkaline, oxygen-rich environment. So it's very important that we get our pH up. It's very important. Did you know it takes 33 glasses of alkaline water to neutralize one glass of soda? Remember we were talking earlier when Carrie, was up, Carrie Lynn was up here that soda has a pH of 2.3. And this water